Hello, my name is Andrea Fernandez. I'm a research scientist here at Zimmer and Peacock. And today we're going to demonstrate the new um, capillary fill adapter that Zimmer and Peacock has developed. As you can see, you have like a microfluidic system. So you can pipette very small uh, volumes into it. Also, it allows you to control the volume inside and to do continuous monitoring without actually removing the sensor from the medium. So it's a very powerful tool. Um, for this, of course, you have the connection to one of ZP Anapods. And from the Anapod, you go to the computer and you have the software in order to, uh, to analyze the data, the raw data that you actually record. Um, in this instance, so you need one of ZP sensors. Here we have, uh, we are going to use actually one of these hypervalue uh, sensors that are screen printed in the flexible substrate, such as PE. And uh, these are great. And um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to fit it inside our uh, flow cell because this is the whole purpose of it. And with the help of this LSP pump uh, from Advanced Microfluidics, uh, we will pump aspire a solution in this case just for the for the for the test purpose we will aspire a fairy ferrocyanide solution five millimolar uh, and then one milliliter and then we'll pump it at a relatively low flow rate through our uh, chamber our flow cell chamber and where our um, hypervalue sensor uh, zp hypervalue sensor will sit so uh, so basically this Capillary fill adapter is made of three parts. One is actually the sensor holder. The other one, it has the microfluidic part where you have like the microfluidics uh, coming in and out. So um, we have the flow chamber, basically the volume chamber where you have the volume, always the same volume, the O-ring. And you have the main part, which has the contact to the contact pads on the sensor and the cable to the anapod. And what you have to do is one of these sensors, you just have to basically insert it into the sensor holder. You have to be a bit careful, use gloves, you should not touch the, the electrodes, so the screen printed electrodes, because they of course might contain formulations. And then you insert it into the main body of the capillary flow cell and then you basically you see you have all the working electrodes and we are with two the help of two screws we are gonna uh, press the top part which has the controlled volume and the no ring to avoid leakage of the liquid inside we're gonna press it around so by positioning the o-ring around the, the electrodes so uh, by doing that so i'm choosing the correct position and now I am putting the screws on. So this has to be relatively tight in order to avoid leakage. Yeah, so not too tight to the point to break it. So now it seems quite tight. We have two, uh, two microfluidic tubes basically connected with standard connectors connected to the, um, to the chamber inside this flow cell. And so what we are going to do is first we connect the capillary fill a cell or adapter into the anapod, one of the anapods. This is done. Then we need a waste. So we will flow from one channel in the pump. I will choose just channel eight. So the, to have a system like this, the advantage is as well, you can do you can do a continuous um, test where you can pump different samples onto your sensor by aspiring from using the different channels on this pump by aspiring from different uh, beakers or different uh, centrifuge tubes and like that you can run a constant test where you switch between different solutions so it's a very very powerful setup now this of course I'm not gonna reuse this liquid, but you could actually um, reuse it. But in this case, it's just going to a waste. So it will flow from this side, from this side into the sensor and then out this side 
into a waste container. So, uh, so how are we gonna do this? Now, I'm just gonna insert channel one. I'm just gonna, so a way to improve the setup would be to open a small hole on the cap for this 50 milliliter, 15 milliliter centrifuge tube and just insert the tube through it. So in this case, I don't have a hole there. So, um, so basically I'm just gonna put uh, the tube into the centrifuge tube, into the solution. And now I am on the software for the pump, but this could also be a script in Python. And uh, I'm gonna select from channel one here, I'm gonna select to pick up, so uh, at a relatively high speed, so 298 pulses per second, I'm gonna pick up one milliliter. So now you see the syringe is filling with the solution. Once this is done, now I'm going back to the software and I'm going to change from uh, channel 1 to channel 8. I'll press move. I'm going to reduce now the pulses. So about 14 pulses per second. And I will uh, start dispensing. So now, as this happens, so the soon the solution, the liquid, the fair fair cyanide, should start uh, arriving um, to the to the actual flow cell, to the to the reservoir, fill the reservoir, which is over the electrodes. It's slightly yellowish, so it will be easy to see. And here, I'm just trying to put it a bit sideways so that you can see it has filled inside the reservoir. It's yellow. It's pumping from this side and pumping out from that side. And I see no leakages, so it's good. And uh, it's probably already arriving to this side, yeah. You can all see, already see drops. So um, yeah, we have here a continuous uh, test setup. And now, since it's connected to the Anapod, I am going to the software and I'm going to run a cyclic voltometry to see if I identify those redox peaks. So now that's what we are looking at. I'll be doing two cycles. And, and basically, this is just an example, of course. This is an illustration of what you could do. Of course, you could run a different setup. You could run um, an amperometric uh, measurement where you are constantly applying a potential and measuring the changes in current depending on concentration from different uh, different solutions that you pump into the the, the fuel capillary uh, cell or you could uh, run for example uh, if it's a potential metric sensor or you could run a constant current or no current at all and just measure the open circuit potential so I think this was a quite successful a demo here so you could literally see the oxidation and a little bit of the reduction peak here so it's a redox reaction so uh, thank you very much for watching if you have any questions please do not hesitate to come in contact with us thank you very much